Bernard, many of my uh, neuroscience and cognitive science friends talk about why consciousness emerged and go through an evolutionary psychology to show how consciousness uh, emerged. Some philosophers look to consciousness in a much more fundamental way, that it's something special about the universe. Uh, as a physicist, you've thought about consciousness. Do you think consciousness emerged or is something fundamental? Well, it's clear that consciousness did emerge, but the point is that it seems to me that there is, there is evidence from physics itself that consciousness is a is a fundamental and not an incidental feature of the universe. I mean, the, the view that most physicists probably have, certainly most reductionist physicists will take, is that consciousness arises as a, as a manifestation of complexity. It arises through, through the brain, but it really is just the, the froth which is produced by all those neurons. And really, consciousness plays a purely passive role in the universe. Right. Um, so mentality really does not have it's just a reflection of the outside world but it isn't fundamental and spirituality is just a delusion that is the sort of the mainstream materialist view sure now personally i i think that view is wrong i think there is indications that consciousness really is more fundamental than that now part of that evidence i suppose for example comes from the anthropic principle, where it looks as though there is something about the universe that is specially designed so that consciousness can arise. Part of it, I suppose, comes from quantum theory, because there at least is a hint from quantum theory that consciousness does play a role, maybe in, in, in collapsing the wave function. Of course, not everybody. There are many different interpretations of quantum mechanics, but at least some people think that Quantum theory is where consciousness actually creates. And, and collapsing theory. the wave function would make quantum mechanics into the real world. So you need, some would say that you need that in, in that interpretation of quantum mechanics. Not everybody says that. Yeah, consciousness is collapsing the wave function, um, is telling us that somehow mentality is getting into physics. Right. Yeah. Now, the problem with all of this seems to be that the issues of fundamental and uh, 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 the creating the universe happened a long time ago and consciousness just emerged within tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years. I think when I'm talking about consciousness being fundamental, I'm talking about, if you like, consciousness with a big C. I'm not talking about the individual consciousness with a little c, which we experience as, right. as human beings. So what, what is consciousness with a big C? Well, by consciousness with a big C, I mean there is something mind-like, if you like, about the universe, which and when I say mind, I don't just mean, as I say, the mind of an individual. I mean there's something about the whole nature of the universe, obviously the way it's constructed, its coherence and its unity, but, but, and, and its beauty, but also the way in which it's constructed with these fine tunings, which, which it's like a, a thought, you know, it's like a, something, it's like a mental structure almost more than a physical structure. Even our theories of reality are ultimately intellectual constructs. I mean, the, the sort of reality we learn about from physics is very remote from the everyday mundane reality of which... So there are, two, there are two ways you can think about consciousness being fundamental. One is it's another factor, like we know four forces in physics, so we can say consciousness is another force. So maybe we know four, now maybe there's a fifth force that works with gravity mm -hmm. and electromagnetism. I'm not sure it's a force, but I but, would certainly say that when people talk about a theory of everything, um, I regard that as a very naive phrase because to me, a theory of physics which does not make any reference to our experience, our consciousness, is, is far from a theory of, phys a theory of everything. It's just a theory of everything to do with fundamental <laughs> physics. But to me, a final theory of physics has got to somehow accommodate mentality because that is such a basic feature of my world. Half my experience of the world is not actually in this direct physical domain. It, it involves things which, if you like, are of a mental nature. And I would like science to be extended to incorporate 
mentality. And when you talk about explaining consciousness, you're not talking about how physics works, the chemistry and biology to evolution, and then brains occur, and that and that consciousness happens to be a product of brain, uh, just like uh, a di digestion is a process of the stomach. That is not my view. My view is, I suppose, more of a filter view of the, of, of, of the brain, which which says that there is, in some sense, you have your the consciousness is there to begin with, and it's simply a question that when sufficiently complex systems build up within the universe, you know, from the Big Bang to, to brains, that is merely a, a way through which the universe can perceive itself. That's how consciousness... So what you're perceived. saying in your terminology, the big C of consciousness is there f forever, or, or certainly in, in this universe, and then when the brain evolves, it can then read the big C and create the little C, which is our consciousness. Yes, it's a, it's a process of the universe observing itself, if you like. Mm. So uh, the filter says that the brain is not actually the source of consciousness. It's, it's just saying that the brain is, is the channel through which the consciousness can observe the universe. So you've got these, conscious, these brains spread throughout the universe, and those are the points from which consciousness with the big C can, can observe the universe. So do you believe the, big, the consciousness with the big C is in parallel with the physical world and in kind of on e equal levels of reality? Or in some sense, in an idealistic sense, do you believe that everything is consciousness and the physical world is sort of some manifestation of part of that consciousness? Well, I mean, I, I, I don't go so, so far as to say that, you know, rocks are conscious. But I'm just saying consciousness is in some sense fuse throughout the universe, throughout the whole physical universe. And indeed, not necessarily just within the physical universe. I mean, as scientists, we obviously just pay attention to the physical universe. But from my perspective, I don't see why there can't be levels of reality that go beyond the simple physical universe. So when, I, when I'm talking about mentality and consciousness, I, to me, the physical universe is just, is, is just one part of that, which is obviously the part we mainly focus on as as physicists and astronomers and as particle physicists, but to me there are domains of experience that go beyond the physical world, which I still think could in principle be accommodated within science. And, and so when I talk about consciousness, if you like, with a big C, that's, I'm trying to accommodate those phenomena as well. And that's something I'm saying which sort of, it can pre-exist the actual, or even the origin of the universe itself perhaps the physical universe itself. But of course, this is not a popular idea among physicists because by and large, most physicists try and forget about consciousness because they, they would take the view that the role of physics is the sort of just, is the third person perspective, you know, experiment and to neglect the first person perspective, which is experience, on the grounds that by its very nature that cannot be part of the domain of, of, of physics. Um, and I know that's a majority view, but it needs to be correct. I think you could have an extended concept of physics which would allow you to re make reference to, if you like, first person, but an experience. And uh, that, that is what I think is, if you like, the next big paradigm shift will be one which does explicitly incorporate mentality. I mean, I've already referred to the sort of hints that maybe consciousness is, is fundamental to the universe rather than incidental. That's not the same thing as saying that maybe one day there will be a theory of physics which will explicitly accommodate consciousness, for example. By so, incorporating it. By incorporating it. I mean, the point is that we've talked about the links between, possible links between quantum theory and consciousness. But I don't think quantum theory will ever explain consciousness. It just hints that consciousness is fundamental. What we really want is a more fundamental picture which will, if you like, underlies both quantum theory and, and mentality. So to me, that's what the, that's what the ultimate challenge is. And uh, I don't think we'll have a final theory of physics until it actually incorporates that. But but of course, when that happens, you will have changed the nature of physics and you'll have changed the nature of science and people will argue about whether it's still physics or whether it's still science.